Coming up on this edition of the EV Revolution Show, Ionic 6 first drives. All right, and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host, and I'm here in beautiful Porto Cove, British Columbia, outside of Vancouver, for the Hyundai Ionic 6 first drive event that I've been invited out to. I want to first start by saying thank you to Hyundai Canada for bringing me out with a bunch of different journalists to be able to spend a day driving around the Ionic 6 in this beautiful uh, countryside around Vancouver, even though today it's kind of rainy and drizzly and cloudy and we've had some cooler temperatures, but hey, it's all good when you're here trying out new vehicles. So I wanna thank them very much for bringing me out. And I'm really stoked to be uh, able to spend a little bit of seat time driving the Ionic 6. So let me get into it and tell you some of my thoughts. All right, so as you know, if you've been following my show, I've done a lot of coverage on the Hyundai Ionic 6 here. Uh, originally started last year, was down in LA for the auto show, uh, did some extensive coverage of, of the world release of it then, the reveal, had an interview with one of their chief engineers and designers. So there's a lot of specs about this car that I've got. So today, really the purpose is give you a quick general overview of the vehicle with some specs and things like that, uh, put you in the seat and give you some of my driving thoughts as I've been driving this around the countryside. And then hopefully later this year, I'll be able to get an opportunity to get a press vehicle Hyundai said they're going to have some available to us in a few months and then be able to spend like a week or so uh, putting this through a little bit more paces and getting a good general sense of what it's like as a daily driver and an all-purpose EV. I can tell you right now, just from my preliminary driving for a few hours today, this is a fantastic all-electric vehicle. Hyundai once again has stepped up to the plate and in my opinion hit another home run for a vehicle that they're positioning directly against the Tesla Model 3 as one of their main competitors, going after that mid-size luxury type sedan class because we've seen so many SUVs we've seen a lot of utility and hatchback vehicles so this is staying in the in the mid-size sedan realm which there aren't that many players in there today for all electric vehicles and Hyundai is going directly after that audience and those types of owners with a really strong offering that has a really good price point and I'll talk about pricing later on so let me start with some thoughts about the design of this vehicle as you can see by some of the B-roll and shots that I have here, Hyundai has put a lot of thought into the design. The key here is aerodynamics. I mentioned in my LA review video that they call this the streamliner design language. It's a throwback to the, um, to the 30s and the 40s uh, when they were doing designs around that aerodynamic shape of a streamliner a locomotive engine or plane, aeroplane at that time. And you can see there's a lot of aerodynamic cues into this. Uh, it's got a 0.22 drag coefficient, so pretty slippery for a production vehicle in that mid-size segment space, uh, which really does, does help with all-electric efficiency. And that's where this vehicle is going to shine um, based on the information that we have and what we're seeing so far that's come out of it. Now, sticking with that design language, of course, one thing that Hyundai started with the Ionic 5 is this pixel type of design language and approach. And as you can see by the turn signals here, you've got all these integrated pixel type lights. You'll see these everywhere, even on the front, there's six pixels indicating the Ionic 6. You'll see a lot of these little Easter eggs of six pixels throughout the different parts of the vehicle. Within even the steering wheel, there's six lights that light up, all again, designating the Ionic 6 um, uh, model and design language. Now Hyundai talks about a driver oriented focus or a driver focused orientation for this vehicle and it really is so. You'll see in some of the interior shots that it really is a driver focused cockpit, really good visibility around um, and, and just a good sense of the road and that what you can see out there for the driver and everything is within the controls and all the major uh, things that you need to do with the vehicle or with the driver's reach. Now, one of the other main attributes of the Ionic 6 from Hyundai is the distinctive user experience. This is really a different looking vehicle than they've ever come out with before, of course, as you can see this in the looks. So really designed for a, a pleasant and seamless user experience. And folks, that's something that I'm always kind of trying to drive home is that 
I don't think you need to really get bogged down with speeds and feeds and, and you know and kilowatt hour efficiencies and this kind of stuff, but have an EV that's easy to use, simple, that has good articulation of information as far as the range and the status of a charge and things like that, but make it easy for users to not have to worry about too much. And I think Hyundai's done a very good job here. Not only does this support multi-fast charging with up to uh, 350 kilowatts, now we don't know the peak rate yet on this. I'm going to guess it's somewhere in the 220, maybe 240 range, but you know, what, hopefully we'll get more updated information on the charging curve of this at some point. Um, but it does support you know, up to 350 kilowatt of charging uh, the fast chargers, ultra fast chargers, which will give you a 10 to 80% charging time of 18 minutes. And if you follow Hyundai, you know that that's what they continue to message is that 18 minute slot which uh, if you look at a lot of videos out there of guys that are charging it, that's actually true. They are able to maintain that. And if there's one thing that we found from the Hyundai products is that the range estimation, uh, estimations are really good. They're fairly accurate. So um, they're doing a good job at taking that energy and, and mapping that into what your range is depending on your driving conditions. So good for them. Also, this does support vehicle to load technology, so it gives you up to 1.9 kilowatts of usable load with the adapter that's provided. There's also a plug in the back seat for that. Um, really a low stress environment, and we've been driving this around for a few hours in some challenging weather from time to time. If we've had some snow going up a little higher here up Cyprus, uh, the, at the top it's snowing and here it's raining, so we've had all kinds of weather today, and it really is a very pleasant experience of a vehicle to drive. All right, so I mentioned the charging, and here's your charging port at the back here. Press that button, it opens up. Nothing too crazy going on here. Your standard J772, your two ports for the CCS Fast with some lights indicating the state of charge and all that kind of stuff. So pretty user-friendly, easy to use. From that perspective, you know, the door is easy to open. Again, similar to Ionic 5. Nothing much is changing there as far as some of the functionality goes. Now, this has a similar battery pack at a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack in here. Uh, again, it's up to 800 volt architecture, so it can multi-switch by, by different charging ports, by different charging power pulls, excuse me, uh, to get you um, different charging rates, as I mentioned earlier. Now, there's a couple of different trim levels. In the States, there is a um, standard range, uh, what they call just a rear-wheel drive standard, with a smaller battery pack at 53 kilowatt hours. But here in Canada, we're getting the 77.4s, and what that'll get us is, um, on the rear-wheel drive single motor, about 225 horsepower, 258 pound-feet of torque. Slap in another motor for the dual motor all-wheel drive, and they're, uh, they're all long-range versions with the 77, as I mentioned, battery pack, giving you 320 horsepower and 446 pound-feet of torque. More than enough, again, folks, as you know, you don't need a ton of power. EVs have that instant torque and that instant pull to get you going. So for some pretty good uh, zero to 60 times, I don't have those times yet, but I'm sure they're gonna be in range to the marketplace and, and to the size of the and type of vehicle that this is. I did want to mention on the charging that for home charging for level two, this does support up to 11 kilowatts of home charging. So giving you that about seven hours from 10 to 90%, uh, I believe. There is a mobile charger that comes with it that you can use as well. Again, everything is basically very similar to what we're seeing. This is an eGMP based platform. It's very, very well received. Again, the Ionic 5 has won so many awards for what it's doing to the electrification market and what Hyundai has done with that. It's the same platform, same as in the Kia EV6, same as in the Genesis GV60. It's a proven platform now that's really doing quite well, uh, delivering good power, good range, and good charging speeds. So as I continue to walk around the vehicle and talk about it, as you can see, I do really like the, the way that the, the rear section of this vehicle looks. It does have that Porsche-esque look to it, you know, kind of like the throwbacks to some of the 911 uh, vehicles or so with almost that kind of whale tail-ish uh, thing going on here. Um, I do like the looks of this. This is a very functional rear spoiler as well to help with aerodynamics. Because this is a hatchback, um, a bit, sorry, this is a sedan, it's not a hatchback, but we found that there's no need for a rear wiper like there might be on some of the other vehicles that we've discussed. Uh, everything seems to be flowing off this quite nicely. Um, and the defog and everything system works extremely well, so that's pretty cool. But again, you've got this pixelization going here. You have rear cameras, you have 360 cameras going everywhere. Uh, easy power uh, trunk open, and if I open the trunk, uh, it's a pretty decent size. It's certainly not gonna win any awards from cargo space. 
So for luggage capacity in the in the boot, it's got 11.2 uh, cubic feet. It's about 316 or so liters. Um, and for under the hood, it does have a small frunk. Uh, it's about 0.4 of a cubic feet. Um, and I'll show you what the liter rating is. So it's not huge, but it's the same as we've seen in those other vehicles I mentioned, the Onyx 5, GV60, EV6. Of course, from uh, the other brands, it's the same basic uh, frunk system that they use there. Enough to put a charging cable and some other odds and ends in there, but certainly not a Tesla from uh, that type of storage. And just to wrap up on some of the, uh, the size specs as well, again, I mentioned at the top that this is directly going after the Tesla Model 3 market, right? They see that Tesla Model 3 is dominating that market space. Uh, in that mid-size sedan and they want to go after that and when you look at the specs it doesn't appear on this vehicle but it's actually bigger than the model 3. Um, it's about four inches uh, of longer wheelbase uh, it's about uh, seven inches um, of overall length longer uh, it's got about two inches of width and about um, two inches of height on the model 3 as well what does that translate to for, for ground clearance? It's just a fraction of an inch, a little higher, so pretty well even. Again, I mentioned that uh, 0.22 drag coefficient versus the 0.23 for Model 3. Pretty slippery, but you know, again, something to, to look at and compare. And then when you look at some of the interior room, it does have a bigger interior room size, even though on some cases it doesn't appear to be where um, it has a uh, little bit less headroom in some cases, depending on with a, or without a sunroof, uh, but, uh, but a good practical legroom sizes, good shoulder room, uh, lo wider shoulder room and wider hip room, and you can look at all these specs online. I just wanted to point them out as some of the differentiators, because again, they, go, they are going after the Model 3. All right, so let me take you for a quick spin and give you my thoughts about uh, how it drives. So just giving my thoughts on driving the vehicle here. Uh, we're getting some good mixed weather, so I thought I'd take an opportunity why we had some sun to comment. Um, as similar to the Ionic 5, it's a very planted vehicle, the Ionic 6 here. Very nice, quiet driving experience. Um, again, the same platform. I, we didn't look outside, but we think that this is the 20-inch version, 20-inch wheel version. So it's going to add a little bit more road noise to the, for the tire size. Um, and might affect the comfort, but this is a very comfortable vehicle. The suspension's very nice, absorbing the bumps. Not so many potholes here in BC, so we're pretty lucky there. Uh, but just a really nice driving experience. Uh, wind noise is very minimal. We did get up to some highway speeds, and again, because of that aerodynamic streamliner shape that's in the Ionic 6, it does reduce some of the wind noise quite nicely. You can still hear just a tad around the mirrors, but that's standard with, uh, with vehicles. But otherwise, steering is very precise, a very nice handling car. Um, I'm 5'7", really nice, comfy driving position that I could find, comfortable seats. My partner is 6'6", six, six. he was able to find a very nice, comfortable driving experience, even with the, the power uh, moonroof that's in it. He was still able to have a good height and not bump his head into the ceiling, being a tall dude that he is. Um, so that goes to show that Hyundai has really thought about the, the insider ergonomics of the vehicle to be able to fit folks from small to large, small to tall, short to tall, that kind of stuff. So it's good to see. Very similar controls in the Ionic 5, so I don't need to go through all that, but just from an overall driving experience, we've had some nice windy roads, again, some rain on and off. We're climbing in altitude, so right now we're at about, about 20 uh, kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which is pretty good. Um, considering that we're, we've been going up in altitude a lot, I think we'll probably get under that by the time we get back to downtown Vancouver in our, I think we're doing about a 250 kilometer route here going up and around the area. So very, very nice. Um, comfortable, again, I love the center console. It's got lots of nice to rest your arms. Uh, that European design that they talked about, about putting the power window buttons into the center, taking things off of the door to minimize um, what you see on the door and clean that up. Climate control and everything, again, very similar system as I mentioned in the Onyx 5, so if you're used to that, uh, nice 12.3, I believe they are, or 12.1 inch dual displays here. Uh, all your information is easily accessed. Uh, I think the steering wheel, they said, is slightly different than the Onyx 5, 
I think it's a bit more squarish, got a little bit larger of a flat bottom, I believe. Very nice and comfortable with all your wheel controls as we know them with your ADAS and everything. I did try the ADAS. I believe this has the level two technology, the HDA2, the Highway Driving Assist Level 2, they call it, which gives you very similar to, uh, to Super Cruise technology where you can drive without actually putting your hands uh, or having to touch the steering wheel or provide any driver feedback. I engaged that a little while ago and we went about five minutes and I didn't ask me to touch the wheel at all. So I believe this this uh, vehicle has it as an option that, I, and I believe that it comes standard with the ultimate pack uh, or the ultimate option. So I mentioned about comfort. Um, the back seats are very comfortable. Overall, as, uh, as I mentioned, this has more dimensions interior and, ex and exterior wise than the Model 3. But the back seats do feel a little smaller, even though they're not because of that sloping roof line, we think. Just kind of gives you that impression that you're a little bit, uh, a little bit more tighter in, even though you're not. The, room, the roominess is there. Um, even my counterpart at 6'6 was able to sit into the back seat. Uh, did you bonk your head? I'm trying to remember. Nope. No, didn't bonk his head, so that's a good sign. Um, so if you're 6'6 or below, you will fit in the back seat. If you're above that, I can't guarantee anything. Um, otherwise, again, very pleasant experience. Um, you know, they talked about the the dash having the kind of the wings, uh, the sides here. I believe that's a carrier for a carry over from the Euro and Asian spec vehicles that have the side cameras in them, where they have the mirrors for side uh, um, side look uh, rear looking mirrors uh, versus uh, they have cameras versus the glass in North America. Of course, we don't have that as, uh, as operational. It's not not allowed here in North America because that's just the way we are. Otherwise, I'm not sure what else to say. Um, I will have some time to spend a, with a vehicle sometime later this year when they, the Ionic 6s will hit the press fleets. Then I'll be able to do a, a longer term drive um, and more so kind of just look at the efficiencies because that's really what Hyundai is pushing on this vehicle is that because of the, the 0.22 coefficient for drag, very, very efficient vehicles. Again, we're already starting to see the average drop now to 20 and keep going down as the longer we drive. Uh, we're, we're hitting six, eight degree, 10 degree C temperatures as we climb up and down around these areas. So I think that's pretty good for what we have uh, for you know the weight that I carry and my tall friend here. I think that's what we're doing all right. Um, so yeah, I'll have more details when I get a press vehicle uh, as far as the drive, but uh, I'm loving this car, a super quiet vehicle very very nice and uh, Hyundai again outstanding job I love the looks Uber area uh, as you heard in my driving review I'm short my co-pilot Matt is tall at 6'6 and we're both able to find very comfortable driving positions and sitting in there for quite some time for an hour hour and a half each each leg that we've been doing both finding it very comfortable so that shows the versatility in a package that you may not think has that versatility because it is very streamlined and it may look smaller than it actually than you think it might be so it is definitely a vehicle to check out and see now one thing i always do is the back room space so the back seat space right how easy is it to get into the back seat well this one does have that low sloping roof, right, for the streamline effect. So you do kind of be, need to be conscious of that. And when you get again, you do kind of need to duck your head a little bit more. So I'll get in to show you. So, yep. So I bonked it a bit there because I came in here. So it is a low roof line. You've got to be conscious of that. Good leg room, um, decent uh, uh, spots to put your feet. And you've got some vents and some USB ports and a center armrest there. So definitely very comfortable for four people. Put in five. All right, so just to get into some wrap up, I mentioned um, in my driving that it's a very pleasant driving experience. It does have multiple driving modes. So, you know, your sport, your eco, we've been running it in normal eco modes to get some good range out of this. Pretty peppy though, of course, as it should be, has uh, four levels of regenerative braking, including a uh, additional level for one pedal driving. Uh, so that's good, so you can get that experience. And one other cool thing about the driving is with the ADAS is that apparently uh, Hyundai says that with the um, highway driver assist level two, there is some machine learning that will actually learn some of the um, techniques and uh, unique habits of the driver for acceleration and spacing when you're using the adaptive cruise control and try to learn. So if you like to keep a longer space, you like to slow down a little bit or accelerate a little bit uh, 
uh, sl much more slowly than quickly uh, in, in keeping spaces. It will learn that and then start to mimic you. And I thought that was pretty cool. Might, it'll be hard to test when we're only driving it for a couple of hours here today, but uh, certainly I'll try to look into that when I have it for a longer period of time. But I think that's pretty cool that Hyundai is at least thinking out of the box and trying to add more features and, and think. Now this does, um, uh, this does support full over-the-air updates, so not only your nav and those kind of systems, but full functionality uh, of the electronics and the, the drivetrain of the vehicle. So if there are recalls or any tweaks, as we see from Tesla and others now that are pushing out over-the-air, this is providing first uh, full over-the-air updates for complete uh, software uh, assistance and software changes to help uh, make a better experience. And of course, user feedback is always provided, and that's where we see a lot of these OTAs come from, is users saying, gee, I wish it did this, or I wish it had this feature. And because a lot of this is software driven, you're able to do that with OTAs. Well, all right, gonna wrap up with some pricing here. Uh, that's one thing that I was really pleasantly surprised last week, Hyundai came out, Canada came out with their pricing schedule for the Ionic 6 and the preferred, they're all the preferred trim level, so they're all the same naming convention there, but there's a couple of models. There's the rear wheel drive. They're all long range again in Canada. We're just getting the 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack in our vehicles. So with the rear wheel drive with 18 inch wheels, you can get 581 kilometers of range. That's outstanding. Uh, with that particular model of the rear wheel drive single motor, it'll be $54,999, which is the base MSRP for that. You can go up to the uh, mid-spec trim, which is the uh, preferred uh, all-wheel drive, so just add another motor to it and some other goodies, at, uh, which will reduce your range to 509 kilometers of EPA-rated range, but that's still really good uh, for just a few grand more at $57,999. You want the top spec, then you need to go to the all-wheel drive, of course, long range with the ultimate package, and that's a whole slew of goodies that that'll give you. Gives you 20-inch wheels as well. Now that two-inch difference in the wheels does cut down a lot on the range capabilities. EPA drops to 435 kilometers. I think it'll do better than that, especially in the nicer weather, of course. So we'll have to wait and see how the real world uh, tests that we start seeing come out when these cars hit the streets. I, but still, 430, 440 kilometers is pretty good for a nicely specced out, fully loaded package, costing you just under $64,000 at $63,999 Canadian. You add your freight PDI and, and other goodies that you might get. There's a slew of pink colors that are available for this, four or five different colors, which are really nice. We have the nice uh, red uh, going here today, uh, which I think looks pretty cool. Uh, but I'm really happy with this price point. Of course, I'd like to see things lower. Don't get me wrong, folks. But for what it is and the competition it's going after, this is the same price as the Model 3 single motor rear wheel drive version up here, the base Model 3, um, standard range, whatever they're calling it now. And it's the same price point at $54,999, but this gives you about 100 kilometers more range. That's pretty huge in my book, maybe even more than 100 kilometers of range uh, for a similar size, a similar space interior vehicle, just differences obviously between what Tesla offers and what Hyundai offers. And you choose what's important to you and what you like or don't like. But I think that that's a very competitive offering into this realm uh, because there's not a lot of vehicles that are kind of going after that space. Everything's been utilities and uh, SUVs and this kind of stuff. So it's nice to start seeing some more uh, sedans come out and smaller hatchbacks as well. So good on Hyundai and the pricing. These do all qualify for the $5,000 national federal incentive here in Canada. They should qualify for a good part of the IRA in the US, but you'll have to check the listings there when they go on sale and see what it qualifies and, and, and what, uh, uh, what portion of that, maybe the 50% portion may qualify. We'll have to check on that. I don't, I don't know for sure, but definitely it's a vehicle to consider good price point and very, very good range and efficiency is what this vehicle is all about. All right, so that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. I hope you enjoyed this quick first drive summary and first impressions of the wonderful all-electric uh, Hyundai Ionic 6 product. Again, the South Koreans are doing some really good stuff with uh, all-electrics folks. Continue to pay attention to them, watch them. Uh, both Kia, Genesis, Hyundai, they're continuing moving forward with that eGMP platform. More models will be coming out under uh, with that platform being underpinned in those vehicles, so continue to watch. But if you're in the market for something like this, a mid-size sedan with some great appointments, some nice features, very quiet, very well handling vehicles, and with really good range ratings and 
in that affordability space of what these uh, vehicles are costing now anyway, it's definitely one to look at. Is it recommended? Absolutely. You guys know I love the Ionic 5. Uh, liked everything so far that these uh, companies have come out with. Hyundai, no exception. They continue to do well. I really like this design language. It may not be for everybody, but it's definitely something that's different and that will keep people talking. So thanks very much again for Hyundai Canada for bringing me out to Vancouver uh, and, and treating me out here for all the stuff that you guys have done. I appreciate it. Um, appreciate you guys watching. You can check out all this stuff. And until the next episode, I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.